How's it going everybody? Jesse here with 3D Font Effects and in this video I'll show you how to form a logo out of particles or clones that are scaling up and scaling down over time and we can also reveal it with this effector nicely. So this is also a sample lesson from the upcoming Niagara Motion course which is coming out on September 12th. So let's make this from scratch. So I'll start with my empty studio scene where I just have a few lights and a background and we can enable the motion design mode up here right away and then click on actors and we need to create a text actor click click again to select it and then i like to center it in the origin of my scene you can either do that down here by clicking on the arrow or you can click on this button here that says reset location to zero and i'll just expand this and drag my details panel over here so i can see everything i'll change the text to just effects and make it bold. You can set the alignment to center, which will move your pivot into the center of the text. Then you can hit R, just scale it up. Then we can scroll down and set the extrude to 10. Uncheck is unlit, so we get some nice shading and we can change the color to maybe blue. Next, we can create a cloner actor. Just select it and click again. And I want to reset the rotation and reset the location. So it's also in the origin of my scene. You can just set the viewport here to default and you'll get your default Unreal Engine viewport back. So we can expand the cloner and instead of copying a cube around, I want to copy spheres. So I'll go under Create, Shapes and make a new sphere. Under Mobility, we need to make the sphere movable and now I can just drag it under the cloner. So now I'm cloning the spheres and the cubes, but I just want spheres. So I'll select the cube and hit Delete. And the spheres are huge, so I'll set the scale to just 0.1 and then select the cloner. Under layout, I want to say mesh. And for the sample actor, I'll grab the sample eyedropper tool and just sample my effects text. We can set the count of the spheres higher to let's say 100, but they're still being born in just this one place. So what we can try is set the sample data from vertices to triangles, but that also isn't helping. And the problem is that if you go from lit over here to wireframe, there's actually only a very few triangles and vertices that make up this text. So the cloner doesn't have that many spots to clone the spheres around. So I'll go back into lid mode. And what we need to do first is select the text, go to the modeling mode, X form, and I want to click convert and convert it into a static mesh, say accept. Now it's going to export each letter separately. So what I want to do now is click on merge and click accept again to get just one static mesh out of this text. And finally, what I want to do is go under mesh and we can go back into wireframe mode and just click on remesh. And you can set the target triangle count to 5000 and you can see how it added all the triangles to the mesh. I'll just click accept and now I can go back into my cloner and sample the text again. And now the spheres are nicely spreading out across the whole text. And we can set the sample data from vertices to triangles. So we can set the count to a thousand because we need to form the text out of the spheres. And we can just hide the effects text at this point to only get the spheres. And we can just scroll down to spawn. And for the loop mode, I want to say infinite because I want them to be infinitely spawning. And for the behavior mode, I want to say rate. So now it's giving birth to essentially one sphere, but I want to set the rate to 500. So they're constantly being born. And now I want them to scale up and scale down over time. So I'll enable lifetime and I ended up giving them a lifetime of four seconds. So we just set minimum and maximum to four. And we can also check scale enabled. And now the spheres are following this graph to scale down over time across one second. Um, but I want them to scale down across four seconds. So I'll grab the last point, which says that at a lifetime of one, I want the scale to be zero. But for me, I want to change this to four. So at a lifetime of four. So now you can click F and it will center the graph for you. And you can see that from zero to four, it scales down. And I'll just go to my materials, select the sphere and apply this blue material to my spheres. But now the spheres are still popping into place. They don't scale up and scale down. They just appear and then they scale down. So what we need to do is select the sphere and set the scale really low. So I'll just set it to 0 0.01. 
And now we can set the first point in the graph very slightly above 1. I found that this graph doesn't really work the way you would expect. Maybe they're going to fix that in new version. But right now what you need to do is just select the first point and set it just very slightly above 1. So I'll do 1.07. That's the value that worked pretty well for me. And so now they scale up and they scale down over time. So now if you want different color spheres under the cloner, you can just control D on the sphere and maybe have three spheres total. And so maybe sphere two can have uh, an orange material and sphere three can have this very dark orange, almost red material. And finally, to reveal the logo, again, select the cloner and click on spawn linked effector. Uh, by default, it's going to try to move it up. So we need to select the effector and set the offset here to zero. I want the type to be a plane instead of a sphere and rotate it 90 degrees this way. And finally, we can set the scale to zero. And now you can just move the effector to gradually reveal the spheres. And if you wanted to animate that, you could just go into your sequencer, drop the effector in here, click on the plus sign and say transform, open up the location transform. And here you can just set a keyframe for the X, maybe move it all the way to the left until it's gone and then go forward, set another keyframe and move it all the way to the right to reveal it. And now when you play this, you'll get your nice reveal. So this was just a quick introduction to the new motion tools. We will go much deeper into all of the new motion design tools as well as Niagara Chaos Liquid Simulations. We will recreate this entire trailer title from scratch and much more inside Niagara Motion. We will cover how to have particles that actually have dynamics so they collide with each other. Here they also change material from wood to metal so I'll show you dynamic materials. We will go over changing the particle color over time, having them attract to objects. We will do audio reactive effects. We will do this voxelization effect, some nice destruction effects, as well as some cool motion backgrounds. This is actually an audio driven liquid simulation that reacts to the music. It's also colored by speed. So the faster the particles are moving, the more they glow and they also change color over time. So there's so much going on here that we've never covered together, brand new techniques and setups that I've never taught in any of my previous courses. We're gonna do some really cool reveals using the new cloners and effectors, some multicolor liquid simulations that mix together, some Niagara physics particles that don't just have to be spheres, they can be nuts and bolts. I'll also show you how to emit liquid out of a character, so definitely join the waitlist below if this sounds interesting to you so you don't miss the launch day and I will see you on Thursday.